This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil edged higher for a third straight day on Wednesday after industry data showed U.S. oil stocks grew less than expected and the U.S. sharply cut its forecast for the country's oil output growth, easing concerns about potential oversupply. Brent crude futures rose 16 cents, or 0.2 percent, to $78.75 a barrel as of 0417 GMT, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude climbed 20 cents, or 0.3 percent, to $73.51. American Petroleum Institute figures showed U.S. crude stocks rose 670,000 barrels in the week to February 2, well below forecasts for a 1.9 million barrel build from analysts polled by Reuters. The U.S. Energy Information Administration, AIA, on Tuesday cut its forecast for domestic oil growth in 2024 by 120,000 barrels per day, BPD, to 170,000 barrels of oil per day, sharply lower than last year's output increase of 1.02 million barrels of oil per day. U.S. crude oil production will rise to 13.21 million barrels per day, BPD, this year, the AIA said in its short-term energy outlook, STEO. It had previously projected that crude production would rise this year by 290,000 barrels of oil per day. In December, U.S. crude oil production was estimated to have reached a record high of 13.3 million barrels of oil per day. Production notched an annual record of 13.21 million barrels of oil per day in 2023. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The European Commission recommended on Tuesday that the EU slash net greenhouse gas emissions by 90% by 2040, an ambitious target that will test political appetite for the region's fight against climate change ahead of EU elections. Europe's climate agenda is entering a difficult phase as it begins to touch sensitive sectors, such as farming, and as traditional industries face fierce green tech competition from China. While the overall target was within the range recommended by the EU's official climate science advisers, the EU executive weakened part of the recommendation concerning agriculture, in response to weeks of protests by farmers angry about EU green rules, among other complaints. U.S. crude oil exports to Asia tumbled to 1 million barrels per day in January, the lowest in over two years as high freight rates and more competitively priced Middle Eastern oils slashed shipments. A surge in supertanker freight rates made it expensive to ship to Asia at the start of the month, particularly to China. Exports to China, the world's largest crude importer, fell to 190,000 barrels of oil per day, the lowest in 13 months. Volumes to South Korea held steady at 494,000 barrels of oil per day, according to data from ship tracking service Kepler. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The French government plans to offer fresh subsidies and loans for a new Caledonia nickel plant co-owned by commodities group Glencore but won't go any further than that. Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire said on Tuesday. The French-controlled Pacific Territory has some of the world's largest nickel reserves, but high costs have left its three processing plants on the verge of collapse. Le Maire has previously estimated the short-term financing needs of the three nickel processing groups, SLN, KNS and Prony Resources, at 1.5 billion euros, 1.61 billion dollars. China has set its first rare earths mining quota for 2024 at 135,000 metric tons, the country's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology said on Tuesday, 12.5% higher than a year earlier. However, the rise is smaller than the 19% year-on-year increase seen in the first quota released in 2023. Rare earths are a group of 17 elements used in products from lasers and military equipment to magnets found in electric vehicles, wind turbines and consumer electronics. China, which accounts for 70% of rare earths mining and 90% of refined output, according to the United States Geological Survey, controls its supply through a closely watched quota system. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. 
Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin will discuss the war in Ukraine and the Black Sea Grain Initiative during a visit to Ankara by the Russian leader, Turkey's foreign minister said on Tuesday. Hakan Fidan did not give a date for the trip, which would mark Putin's first trip to a NATO member state since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. A Turkish official told Reuters last week he would visit Turkey on February 12. Ankara has sought to persuade Russia to return to the Black Sea Grain Initiative, brokered by Turkey and the United Nations, that ensured the safe export of Ukrainian grain during the war via the Black Sea. Russia withdrew from the accord in July 2023 and has said it was not interested in reviving it. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.